Welcome everyone. Welcome. Today is Monday. It's the start of a new week. And what we are starting with is talking about what is going to happen in the next reset. Because the next reset is going to have a bunch of buffs and a very important nerf, which is worth going over. So uh, we are going to start immediately with the buffs. Because the buffs are, you know, they are quite bittersweet. They are quite sad because they are going to be touching, of course, specs that have been uh, considered underperforming recently in this tier so this is what we are getting let's just go over the specs that have been buffed so warlock uh, affliction of course <laughs> no no needs for buffs to demology and destruction uh, affliction warlock arms warrior outlaw rogue windwalker monk and beast mastery hunter are the five specs that have been given a buff all of them but uh, outlaw have received a four percent more damage in their abilities while outlaw has received a three percent damage increase now it's interesting once again that blizzard decides to buff all of them for basically the same amount how how did they come up with this four percent number for all of them that's interesting there is a couple of differences between these specs being buffed because for example in the raid they are quite unpopular with the exception of beast mastery so Affliction, Arms, Windwalker, and Outlaw are in the bottom seven, I think, of most played specs in the raid. They are not popular at all. Beast Mastery is somewhat in the middle, but that has more to do with just how many players play Hunter, which is a lot. The lack of popularity also follows this trend more or less in Mythic Plus, because in Mythic Plus, for example, you see here Outlaw and Arms Warrior being quite not really played and this is all keys by the way this is not high keys whatsoever just at the entirety of the mythic plus levels arms and outlaw are not very popular windwalker is okay windwalker is in the average for range dps the popularity is pretty much reversed you have affliction which is very low the second lowest of all ranged specs in mythic plus and then you have beast master which is actually funnily enough in, at this moment the most popular range dps at all key levels in mythic plus of course of course once you start looking at the actual challenging keys the actual challenging content you see that arms and outlaw are still very very unplayed and unpopular windwalker is still more or less in the middle it's still healthy as a spec in mythic plus and then you have the range dps at high keys where once again, Affliction stays super low, and there is the full reversal where Beast Mastery is no longer the most popular of range specs, but it is one of the least played. So, as far as popularity goes, except for Beast Mastery, which is still played a little bit more than the others, most of the other specs have not been particularly played this, um, this tier. Of course, of course, you can also find you can also find some sort of correlation to the performance because if you look at the performance in the raid, what do we find at the bottom? At the bottom, we find arms, we find beast mastery, we find windwalker, we find affliction warlock. The only outlier that escapes this this bottomness of performance is outlaw, which is somewhat in the middle. So even as performance went, these specs were not really doing that well. So. You know, it's mostly it's mostly warranted that these specs were getting buffed if we were to look at which ones were the least performing specs. Uh, basically, the, the TLDR is that most of these buffs are useless. They are they are worth to point out to to let us know that Blizzard understands that these specs are weak right now. However, the buff itself is not going to amount to much. I guess if we had to if we had to find a glass half full, if we had to find a good buff would have to be for windwalker because windwalker is already played at the higher slash highest levels of mythic plus so to at the very least a somewhat decent amount so uh, they will be able to make use of this buff at very challenging content the other specs ah, not so much it's not that this is going to uh, make those specs completely take over their counterparts it's not that now affliction is going to be relevant compared to destruction or compared to demonology for example or that outlaw is going to suddenly be beating assassination or subtlety maybe maybe because arms wasn't doing that badly compared to, to fury in the first place maybe some players are going to be playing arms a little bit more in the raid 
that's only the other possibility but beyond that mm, these are pretty small compared to what would have been needed by these specs to drastically increase the performance talking about talking about drastically increased performance we have to point out the only nerf of the hotfix which is the nerf given to blood death knight so oh boy there's been uh, a lot of um, discussion regarding this nerf there are quite a few players particularly at the high end of competitive levels particularly mythic plus levels who are not very happy about this nerf considering they consider blood death knight to be now a completely dumpstered spec unviable and unplayable at the highest of levels other players are pretty happy because blood death knight was in an abominable state and it was just way out of control compared to other tanks and needed to be fixed so let's take a look at what exactly happened with blood death knight blood death knight has a tier set uh, a tier set that works very well with what they want to do this tier set gives them a lot of hurt strike free casts and when you cast hurt strike yourself as well you get extension to your dancing rune weapon half a second extension to your dancing rune weapon whenever hard strike is being cast the issue is that the nerf in question is reducing the extension to your dancing rune weapon from half a second half a second per hard strike cast to 0 0.33 seconds now immediately if you don't play bdk you have no idea what this means beyond just what it reads you're like well this is like a 0 0.17 seconds nerf that seems like minuscule why are people overreacting so much to this type of nerf well well you need to understand that uh, blood death knight casts hard strike quite a lot and when i say quite a lot i mean this lot of hard strike casts <laughs> and that's not all that's not all because on top of the casts that the death knight is doing there is also the free casts that you get because the four piece set bonus summons an extra dancing rune weapon so now you have two dancing rune weapons and the four piece set bonus gives you a chance that when you parry your rune weapon lashes out hard striking your your enemy so you have yourself hard striking and your two dancing rune weapons hard striking this becomes this becomes particularly oppressive uh, because the four set makes this happen whenever you parry right so whenever you parry this automatic hard strike gets lashed out by your rune weapons what's the problem the problem is dancing rune weapon increases your parry chance by 40 percent so the longer you can keep dancing rune weapon active the longer your parry chance is going to be extremely high the more you're going to parry the flurry of white attacks that the pool you just had the 20 mob pool you just did as a blood death knight and all those parries working you're gonna keep extending your dancing rune weapon you know dancing rune weapon as a two minute cooldown and is supposed to last for eight seconds so technically speaking throughout the entire run of a mythic plus key if every two minutes you have eight seconds of dancing rune weapon the uptime the total uptime the amount of time dancing rune weapon was active throughout the key should have been eight percent ten percent you know if you take into account the gaps between pools etc etc eight to ten percent instead this is the uptime of dancing rune weapon in a mythic plus key which is anywhere from 60 to 70 percent of the time is how much dancing rune weapon is going to be active in the key so dancing rune weapon being active 60 to 70 percent of the time it's the equivalent of dancing rune weapon having a two minute cooldown and lasting one minute and 15 seconds not eight seconds that's kind of the issue with this entire setup this setup gets made even worse by the extra bonus of the two piece because the two piece not only was increasing the duration of dancing rune weapon but the two piece was also giving you stacking strength whenever the hard strike from yourself or from your rune weapons would proc you would also be getting one percent more strength this makes it so that you would be almost doubling your strength thanks to this two piece set bonus 50 60 70 percent more strength was quite common for a blood death knight to, to reach because of how many hard strikes you were just pushing out so all of this combined all of this combined created quite a problem 
the Death Knight is spamming a lot of hard strikes, it's extra damage for free, plus you're extending your Dancing Rune weapon, which is more damage, you're also gaining strength stacks every time it procs, so you're gaining more damage because of more strength. Not to mention, of course, Crimson Rune Weapon, the other, the other culprit of making your Dancing Rune Weapon active so often. The legendary which makes it so that whenever you consume a Bone Shield, the cooldown of the Dancing Rune Weapon is reduced by 5 seconds. Not to mention, not to mention the multiple times buffed Shackle the Unworthy, which was pretty much giving you 20% more damage active very, very often. All of this combined made Blood Death Knight skyrocket in the damage, in the max damage it had. When I mean skyrocket, I'm being serious. This is a top 20 Affliction Warlock log of single target damage, you can see. A respectable 12 to 13,000 DPS. This is Windwalker Monk, which is a respectable 13 to 12,000 DPS in single target. And this is Blood Death Knight, which is another respectable 13 to 12,000 DPS in single target. Yeah, but they are supposed to be tanks, not DPS. They, should, they shouldn't be beating uh, DPS specs at their own game. And some people might be like, well, you know, the problem here is that they needed to buff those underperforming DPS specs and not nerf the tank spec that is doing well. Well, here are the top 20 Vengeance tanks in single target, having pretty much half, <laughs> literally half, the damage of a Blood Death Knight in single target. And this is just single target. In AoE, it gets similarly bad. Uh, yes, other tanks have quite some ways to do AoE damage, like Prot Paladin and uh, Guardian Druid, for example. But the real issue with Blood Death Knight is that they could do it constantly. They had pretty much no downtime. They could go Giga Pool after Giga Pool. They didn't have an incarnation they had to wait for. Not to mention the self healing. The self healing of a Blood Death Knight was through the roof with this set because one of the death sentences of a Blood Death Knight in Mythic Plus was, is, supposed to be, white hits. A bunch of continuous auto attacks that chunk you constantly is not even the big hits, it's just the constant hits, which now you can parry most of them. This makes Blood Death Knight extremely self-sufficient and gives them a ridiculous HPS compared to other tanks. It basically requires nearly no healing in a Mythic Plus key. Therefore, <laughs> Therefore, this was why it needed to be nerfed. However, however, there is the point of, is it too much? Is this the right kind of nerf? Shouldn't Blizzard have gone for a different type of nerf, perhaps nerfing the strength stacking, so they do less damage? They don't nerf the survivability, they don't nerf the defensiveness of DK, but just the strength, the the constant ramping damage. Perhaps they nerf the damage done by the rune weapons. The hard strike generated by the rune weapons could be doing less damage. Perhaps they nerf one of their legendaries. Any type of nerf that could hit the damage done of a Blood Death Knight, but not cripple as much the defensiveness, because now being without dancing rune weapon for so long makes them much more vulnerable. So this is the current debate re regarding the nerfs to the Blood Death Knight. I think Definitely, Blood Death Knight needed nerfs. I also think they needed them more in their damage. They were doing more so than their survivability. Even then, though, their survivability was definitely <laughs> in need of a nerf as well. Perhaps not as large and also as rotationally impacting as this one, but it still was needed. I, I, I don't agree with people saying that because Blood Death Knight hasn't been meta since BFA Season 1, then they shouldn't have been touched. The state they ramped themselves in thanks to the tier set bonuses was just way too, way too much of an outlier compared to other tanks. So he needed to be reined in a little bit more. We will see if uh, the Doomsayers will be correct after the hotfix goes through and if effectively Blood Knight Time will be doomed at high keys or if it was just a little bit of an exaggeration. For now, these were the changes we have gotten. Uh, we will get rather in the next reset so you can let me guys know what you think about these i'm pretty sure you will be mostly disappointed about the buffs as they won't really amount to much the more interesting the more interesting opinions will be about the changes to blood death knight of course but with this i'm going to leave you to the rest of the start of your week so 
thank you guys of course for watching uh, you can also support the channel even more by liking and commenting and subscribing on the channel which for today is only going to be open to non filthy blood death knight abusers uh, thank you again of course see you guys soon and in the meantime i hate it i hate it when i start a video and i have to drink but then i'm like i'm gonna drink later and the deeper i go in the video the thirstier i become